welcome debut romance author, Lark Green. Hey! <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> so in case listeners don't know, can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself and your writing? Yeah, so my name is Lark. Um, I've been a nurse for about five years. I've been working in healthcare a total of seven years. Um, so I work as a nurse during the day and I actually write monster romance at night. I know. So saucy. Uh, so right now I live in Arizona. I live in the desert with my husband. We are very isolated. We actually live, um, on a native American reservation with our three spoiled dogs and living in the middle of nowhere. It sucks, but it also, you know, has its advantages, which is like, I have all this time to read and write. I don't have a lot of distractions. Um, I started writing. So my writing journey, it began around high school. I was very interested in writing and reading. I got, you know, with a lot of people, I got really busy during college and I stopped. When the pandemic first hit, that's when I started writing again, actually, when I had COVID for the first time and I was quarantined in my room and I had nothing else to do. I, I actually started writing fanfic just for fun. And then it slowly progressed. Uh, a, a couple years later, when I was about to turn 29, I was like, I was having a career crisis where I had kind of fallen out of love with nursing. And, you know, I just, I didn't know what I wanted to do. You know, that's never fun when you're like the year before you're about to turn 30, you know? So I was like, you know what? I want to write a book and I want to like have it done before I turn 30. And so, yeah, that's kind of where it started. And I'm 30 now and I've finished my first book and I've edited it and it's coming out just, you know, today when the podcast is coming out. Well, what a great time to kick off, you know, your debut into the <laughs> writing world is like monster romance. Why not? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> sure. Why not? <laughs> you know, that's awesome. And I love that you set a goal. You had a goal in mind for that. Like you knew by the time you were 30, you were like, okay, I'm going to have my book released around that mm -hmm. time. Right. So what kind of led you specifically to go into the romance genre and even more so into the monster romance? Yeah, I know. It's it's a big jump. And <laughs> honestly, that's a question I ask myself a lot because I haven't been reading romance very long. Like I kick myself a lot because I love romance so much, especially monster romance. And I feel so bad that I found it much later in life because mm -hmm. in high school, I was the type of person where I was forcing myself to read like the American classics because I thought it would make me a better writer for whatever reason. And then, you know, and then, you know, I started writing and everything. And I thought my first book was going to be like a psychological thriller. Um, mm. And then I know, I know. And then I was talking to my friend that I, I had met, like in the fanfic space, and she was telling me about these alien barbarian books she was reading, you know, Ruby Dixon stuff. And at the time, too, I was like, huh, that's kind of weird. That's not for me. Uh, and then I just, I picked up one of Ruby's books just on a whim, just to kind of read it as a joke. And I like fell absolutely in love with it. So I, I didn't like go to romance and then monster romance. I like jumped romance and went straight deep into the monster romance realm. And I've been here ever since. <laughs> well, I'm so, I'm so glad that you, you did. Cause then you wrote a monster romance yeah. to go along with it because that's exciting. And like, I feel like everyone did that around the time of the pandemic for a lot of reasons. I feel like people kind of fell into romance because it was kind of, there was some kind of comfort. I love Definitely. that you mentioned too, that you, you wrote fanfic kind of in the mm -hmm. beginning of that, because that for me, that is such a comfort. Sometimes I'll just write a short fanfic story. <laughs> I think that's like how a lot of people get started and and I felt, and I'm embarrassed to say this, but like, I felt ashamed of it at first. Like it took me a couple weeks to tell my husband, like, Hey, I've been writing fanfic. Like, hopefully you can still love me. And of course it wasn't a big deal. And I think that's how a lot of people get started with writing. And so, yeah, it's, it's totally normal. And, and as we referenced, you just released your debut romance, the orc boss right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Congrats. That's amazing. <laughs> um, now I know you wrote the book you mentioned while working full time as a nurse, which yeah. is a demanding job in and of itself. How are you able to manage both a day job and writing? So I've worked, you know, up until um, just recently, I had worked as a bedside nurse. Um, and it, yeah, it is a physically and emotionally draining job, especially during the pandemic. I worked in a very 
Uh, my last bedside job, I was working at a very small hospital. We didn't have a lot of resources. Um, and I just felt like I was being pulled in every different direction. And that's, that's when I kind of hit a wall and was having my career crisis where I thought like I needed a big change. Um, so I was working as a contract nurse for them. So I was only with them for a year. Once my contract ended, um, I started looking for remote jobs with like telehealth. And luckily I was able to find one and I thought, oh my gosh, perfect. I'm going to have so much energy. I'm going to be able to not only write my first book, but to write like two more books. And, you know, that actually wasn't the case. Like I, I didn't realize, even though I wasn't physically exhausted at the end of the day, I was still, you know, it's hard to look at your computer all day and then turn around and like, look at your other computer and try to write and edit your story. It took a lot of d deciding where to put my energy. Um, you know, obviously work is a priority. I really aspire to be like a morning person who writes in the morning and then goes to work and, you know, then has the evening off to just watch TV and, you know, be lazy. But I just, I know myself, I'm not a good morning person. So I had to focus a lot of my energy on the weekends. And that meant making writing a priority. You know, I, I'm the type of person where I will look for any reason not to do any housework. And so I would get up in the mornings <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people can relate with that. Um, you know, I would, my weekends was like my writing time and my editing time. And even though I'm a nurse and, you know, my remote job could be pretty demanding, I'm very lucky. You know, I don't have any kids. My husband, he works nights. He works health care too. So he works nights. And so you know, I didn't really have to deal with him until like he woke up in the afternoons. So I would just focus my energy on the weekends. And then the other thing that really helped me was having a really good group of friends. Um, and then also having my husband help me. So, you know, I would meet with my critique group like every couple of weeks. And so I knew I'd have to have like a new chapter for them before we met. And then my husband too, even though he doesn't read romance, I would say, okay, I got to freaking get this chapter done. I need you to bug me about it. So that's kind of like how I got there. Well, and I love that you bring up like two very important points. I think new authors may not consider or realize until they kind of get into it. Like you were mentioning that balancing a day job and writing can be very draining right? Like you're trying to switch those modes, especially if you're doing something very kind of analytical in and of itself, and then kind of shifting gears to be more creative can be mm -hmm. really, really hard to, to kind of switch one mode on and off and then try to have the energy to do it, to do something brand new again, you know, to put work yeah. into it. And then the accountability partners, I think those mm -hmm. are so important to success for any author you know, and that's our, those are always like two big pieces. I feel like even when I was starting to write, I was just like, I'm so drained. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't. So hardly, yes. So when you were going into it, like as a new author, when you were kind of starting your writing, did you have any kind of like, did you plot anything be beforehand? Did you kind of plan anything out with how you were structuring um, your time with your weekends or your weekdays? Yeah. Um, I'm a big, planner. I'm a big promoter of like being a planner. I know everyone has a different process. Planning really helps me. So I would outline my story. I would, and I, I actually followed the, uh, what's it called? Romancing the Beat by Gwen Hayes hmm. and then Save the Cat Beat Sheet, you know, by Blake Schneider. I, so I mostly used Romancing the Beat, especially because I was writing a romance book. Uh, so I, I plotted, you know, all my beats and everything and I got all that covered. And then, um, you know, as I was writing, I was very open to inspiration. So if I was writing something and it felt like it was going a different way, I wouldn't like fight against it. I would just go with the flow. Um, there were also times where, you know, my, criti my critique partners would give me advice or they would have suggestions and I'd be very open to that. And I did have to change a lot of scenes um, and that was okay. I, especially because like with my first draft, like I got it done really fast. I actually finished my first draft within a month. <laughs> I know <laughs> I, I can write really fast. It's just the editing that takes me forever. And I, and I think it is because 
I would plot out, I kind of knew I would sit down and I would know exactly what I was going to write. I would, you know, I would have my plots, but then I would think about the scene that I was going to write and I would even think about it or like let the movie play in my head and just kind of go and just like type it all out. Well, and also when you were kind of thinking about like uh, planning all of this out or working through it, when you said you'd get your first draft in a month, which is awesome. Like very few people I know could do that. I, I've never been able to do that. But did you just give yourself permission to write or did you, because I yes. get stuck in an editing hole. That's where, oh, okay. See, yes. I get stuck in an editing hole. That's where I get I, stuck. <laughs> I think that's the biggest roadblock, like writers. I mean, I say this like I know, but I, I am a new writer. So, you know, just take my word with a grain of salt. But yeah, I think that's the biggest roadblock a lot of writers hit. Um, one caveat that I forgot to mention because I don't want people to listen to this and be like, oh my gosh, like I can't write a draft in a first month. That's ridiculous. I wrote that first draft when I was between jobs. So that's the only way I was able to write it so quickly. You know, I knew I was kind of, I was going to be transitioning to a new job soon. So I think that's kind of what put the fire under my bum to get it done really fast. Well, and I think that's a very underutilized or not thought about because people are like, I don't want to give myself a deadline, but you know, giving yourself a deadline isn't a it bad helps. thing. Oh, it, it does. It really does. Because I'm yeah. the kind of person, if it's out there forever, like I can do it when I get time to it, I'll never have time for it and I'll just right. let it go forever. So, and I feel like a lot of authors do that. So when you got from beginning to end, I'm kind of curious, how long did it take you? Cause you got the first draft in a month. Like how long did the editing process take? Um, I can tell you, cause I actually, I'm the type of person where I recorded exactly like how much word count I had per day. And like when I started, nice. when I finished, so let me I'm gonna tell you the exact days. Okay. So I started this book December 13th, 2021. And then I completed my edit. Okay. So I started it then I finished the first draft January 18th, 2022. And then I finished the editing of the Orc Boss on 10 uh, 2022. That's the timeline I had. Well, then in kind of basically less than a year, you kind of had yeah. a, from beginning to end, from the written to the very final, pro the final product. And really it's because I, I work and I have no life. <laughs> I, need, I need to add that caveat because I know people, you know, everyone has responsibilities and kids. I live in the middle of nowhere in the desert. I don't have a lot of distractions. <laughs> well, and like you said, though, though you prioritized your writing, you know, they always mm -hmm. tell you that if you want to be a writer, you got to prioritize your writing. Yeah. Um, so you said you used the weekends a lot, you utilize the weekends quite a bit and you understand you're not a morning person, right? Is yeah. what you kind of mentioned. So like, did you use any other specific methods? Cause I think those are important to know when you're trying to say, okay, I need to find these little pockets of time to mm -hmm. write. Well, and you had mentioned earlier too, cause I wanted to add on that, um, with, uh, giving yourself permission to write with, with that. Yes. I had to, I think my biggest roadblock that I have experienced is I could not turn off my, the editor side of my brain. I didn't understand like, you know, writing is editing. And so of course your first draft is going to be bad. So the first step was I mentally had to tell myself, like, I not only give you permission for this first draft to be bad, but like, I want it to be bad because that means it's only going to get better. Um, and I know that sounds kind of hokey and corny, but it really did help me it was kind of hard to kind of get over that feeling and just turn off that editor side of my brain. But once I did, I was able to kind of just let loose and just let the words flow. You know, talking about other methods that kind of helped me create an environment that uh, didn't allow for any distractions. So I would, you know, make sure my dogs were taken care of. Um, I would put my phone away. I downloaded apps on my computer where it makes it so you can't like access like the internet or anything. I'd put a timer on my computer and then I would just like, I, I would challenge myself. I'm a big believer of like having many sprints with yourself and, and challenging myself in that way. So I would say, okay, so I can write an average about like 3000 words per hour. Let me see if I can do a little bit better. And I would have like 30 minute sprints and then I would take a break and then 30 minutes, minute sprints. 
And then once I kind of hit that goal for the day, I would let myself have a break. Because I think, you know, when your focus is writing, you know, it's really easy to let it consume you. And I think like with work, you need healthy boundaries or you're going to start to like resent it. And so, you know, once you kind of hit that quota and that quota can look different for everyone. I mean, if you're like a busy mom and you can only spare 30 minutes, like, you know, write your 30 minutes and then put it out of your head and just, you know, go on with your day and then try a little bit better the next day, try to get your work count up the next day. I think that really, that's, that's really what helped me get my first draft done so fast. Well, and that is such a, a great tool to use that a method you had mentioned was, um, kind of challenging yourself mm-hmm. because that's something that I found we do actually, um, whenever I go on retreats with my writing girlfriends, yeah. it's like, we will kind of set like a, a goal to say like, okay, we're going to do a writing sprint for like 10 minutes, right. As much as you can. And mm-hmm. I, I love those little challenges. And something I actually just recently talked to Catherine um, McClatchy, who's been on the podcast before, we talked Mm -hmm. about setting goals for yourself. And like, sometimes those are very easily achievable goals so that you can do a go beyond that. Like a lot of times I think too, we set goals for ourselves of like something crazy. Like I want to get, um, I feel like a year was like great or or anywhere from a year to a little less was perfect for like getting it a book written and getting it like finished right to the final Mm -hmm. product. Sometimes I think we set ourselves up by saying like, I'm going to do it in like three months. And it's just like, Ooh, that's going to be fast. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's just not, it's just not possible. So I'm, I'm glad you, it sounded like you set yourself like achievable goals too, within those timeframes. Were you able to track them kind of successfully? Right. Yeah, I did. I did. And I, and I think I was kind of hard on myself. Um, and I would talk to like my critique friends, you know, and it, and it helped too, because I would, I was meeting with them pretty regularly. We would even do, they live, you know, we all live in different States. And so we would meet like over zoom and have sprints with each other. Um, so I think having that community really helps. I mean, you know, I had the big goal where, you know, the very open-ended goal where I was like, I'm going to write a book before I'm 30, you know, getting the first draft done, I want to write about 4,000, 5,000 words per day. It at least put me at like having it done within a month. The editing part was the hardest for me. Um, cause I thought I could get the editing done super, super fast. That was not the case. Mm. So I ended up, I had to kind of have a moment where I realized like, okay, I'm not going to get a chapter edited once a day. Once a week is good. Once a week is really, really good. And it ended up being once a week, two every two weeks. And that was okay. And so that's kind of the guideline. Like I went by, like I would get down on myself like, oh, you know, I thought I was going to have this done a lot faster, but looking at it now, I realize like, holy crap, I wrote and edited this book like in under a year. That's pretty amazing, especially for a first time book. Oh, yeah. Because it does. It can take a long time, especially if you just give yourself permission to write. Like you mm-hmm. said, sometimes you're just like, I'm not sure where this sentence makes sense, but I'm going to try to untangle it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I know if I showed you my first draft, you would LOL so hard. It is so, it is so silly. And like, it, that's okay. Cause, I, you know, I heard before, like the first draft, you're just telling yourself the story. Um, and even though I had a hard time with the editing, I'm just not a very good editor. Um, but, you know, having that foundation of like the bare bones, like I was able to kind of like spit it out a lot easier and like edit it and kind of clear up the, you know, page of what I was trying to say. You mentioned yourself, you're not really an editor. Did you kind of lean on the account of your accountability girlfriends or, or your partners or your friends? Yes. Uh. yes. Oh my gosh. I tell them like, you know, they say like, Oh no, like you wrote the book, but like they had a major, major part in it. And I'm very lucky. I don't know how this worked out, but you know, this little critique group I found, like they're very, very, they're very, very good writers. You know, they kind of became like my writing mentors, but they're very, very good editors. And so they did a lot for the book. I can never give enough props to like writing partners, critique partners, beta readers, like all of those, because Mm -hmm. they, they help you kind of push you along, right. To make you better, to make your writing better and help improve it. Little shifting gears a little bit. So Mm -hmm. when you were working both as a nurse and in telehealth, 
Uh, I'm sure like we talked about that can be very stressful and draining. Is your book, is it more of a dark romance or is it kind of more lighthearted? Is it somewhere in the middle? Cause I imagine going from very stressful draining to maybe even writing, depending on where you sit on the spectrum <laughs> of light versus dark, I like of the thing, it could be very hard place to kind of go from one end mm-hmm. to, to the other. I thought it was a little bit dark, but I've been getting reviews and, you know, I've had a lot of reviews say like, oh no, this is like very light mafia. This is very like, um, it's, it's not as dark as I was thinking, which mm. I, I'm glad because I, I feel like it, there can be some heavy themes and like with why I read, it's a form of escapism. So I wanted it to be interesting. You know, I wanted there to be plot, um, but I didn't want it to be so draining that you feel like you need, you know, a break from the book. And it, it's interesting too, because when I first, first started my writing journey, I was like, okay, I'm going to write a medical thriller and I may still write that. That's still kind of in the back of my mind, but it was hard because I'd work at the hospital all day and then I'd go home and try to write about this, you know, person working in the hospital. And I was like, I cannot, I cannot do this. So I I think even though, you know, my book is mafia and everything, it's, it was a good break for my world. No, that's a great point because that is kind of, it is kind of writing is, I think just like reading is an escapism for a Mm -hmm. lot of writers. And it's very true. Sometimes they say, write what you know, but at the same time, it's like, but what's the fun in that? I already know this stuff. I kind of want to do write about something else. (laughs) Right. Right. There's definitely pros and cons. Like, you know, if there was wound care, there is like a scene in my book where, you know, the heroine has to like patch up the hero's like stab wound. And I was like, all right, I got this. (laughs) That part was really fun to write. (laughs) Well, and I'm sure because my my Nana was a nurse and my husband worked as an EMT. So I know you have stories. Right, so right. and like I could probably you might want to put those in the book for later because I know he's told me stories and I'm just like, I'm saving that for later. I'm going to mm-hmm. put that in there somewhere. No, for <laughs> sure. No, I know my my I've had like a few interesting stories in my career. My husband right now, he actually works in the ER. And so whenever he's telling me about these like wild, wild stories, I'm like listening really close. I'm like, all right, I may put that in a book later. <laughs> And so it was very, it's always been very interesting. And sometimes he'll just throw out that knowledge somewhere. So I just tuck it in the back of my head. Like, yeah, I'll use that for later somehow. You did put like methods in place, like for like word counts, you put apps on your computer, which love that idea for like, keep you on track. So you don't go down Mm -hmm. rabbit holes of the internet, which I do. Yeah. Yeah. It's so bad. (laughs) Did you build in like some kind of buffer or downtime to actually do research for things you might not know about, or you're like, Put an asterisk by that. I I know that's not right, but I'm going to figure that out later on Google. I mean, I am the type of person, I don't like doing research. (laughs) I'm very lazy when it comes to that. Um, I'm like, if it's, if it takes me more than five seconds, like I'm just going to, I don't know, figure it out, make it up. Mm. Um, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But um, I think like with my first draft, I really tried to focus and just write. So if there was something that came up, I needed to research later. I had a separate document. So I would like write that down. Um, you know, make sure to like look this up later. And it it was kind of hard too because it's a fantasy world. Um, dealing with the mafia, I had a hard time like trying to find where to do that research. Like I watched like some mafia shows um, and stuff like that. But I kind of had to make it up as I go. But yeah, the, just having that separate document, I just. Mm-hmm. I had to make sure like nothing stopped my flow or even if I had like a new scene idea or like I wanted to add something to the scene, I would just put that on the separate document. And then when I would go back and do my second edit through, I'd be like, okay, you got to make sure to add these beats. Well, and that's a, I mean, that's very fair. Like luckily because of, um, monster romance, we can kind of make up rules about the mafia. Yes. (laughs) Probably. I like that you had a separate document because that that's a great that's a great way to kind of keep track of what else might where you need to tighten things up. Like just mm-hmm. like put a bow on it and just be like, okay, I just need to make sure that this is okay before I finish this draft. Did you also build in time for like <laughs> recharging? Like when you didn't feel like writing? There were plenty of times um when I was just like so sick of my story and I just wanted to be done with it. So I would just say like, okay, I'm going to take like a week off. 
um, and then come back to this with fresh eyes. And that usually helped. I complained a lot to my critique writers and they were very encouraging, like, no, this like, isn't, this is good. Like, it's not as bad as you think it is. And I think, you know, we're our own worst critics. I was really, really hard on myself. Um, and so I, you just either have to push through that bad feeling um, or even it's okay to like take a break from your stuff and then come back with new eyes. And I think that really does help you see it from a different perspective. And, you know, for me, I was like, okay, this isn't as bad as I'm thinking. I'm going to keep going with this. I mean, I'm already this far, might as well finish it. Did you time those times? You saying, okay, I'm going to give myself like two days away from it or did it kind of just happen organically? It kind of just happened oh. organically with the first draft. I got it done so fast. I didn't have any time to second guess myself. And then, you know, when I was going through the second draft, there were, I did have those times a lot and I didn't really say like, okay, I'm going to give myself three days off. I would just kind of go with the flow. Yeah. I'd usually end up giving myself about a week. Another thing I did that kind of helped me even after the first draft was done is I would listen to like the audio book of romancing the beat. And that kind of helped me give, give me new ideas, like new insights that, you know, helped me. Or even just like reading other stories and listening to other stories um, really kind of helped inspire me. Well, and you bring up a great point because that's something I feel like I do if I need to recharge or I need to step away for a little bit, either from the podcast or just writing in general. I'll be like, I'm going to go read. And I usually like to read something yeah. in the genre I'm writing uh, just because that to me just inspires me or makes me feel like, all right, I want to go back to my stuff. D did you feel like you were reading more romance while you were writing and were you reading more monster romance in particular? <laughs> yeah, I, I jumped a lot between, I think up until that point, I had mostly read monster romance, but at that point I'd actually started reading like contemporary romance. I'd read a little bit of mafia romance and I tried to focus, um, you know, on mafia romance just to kind of see, you know, like learn from other books, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm very much a mood reader and I didn't let that stop. Like I just kind of read what I wanted to read. And, and I like, I've listened to, you know, other authors and other podcasts where they say like, read anything and everything. And so I really like leaned into that. Like I would listen to like autobiographies if I wanted to listen to like a thriller, I would. And I, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I, I do have a hard time like sitting down and like reading a book sometimes. And so I do listen to a lot of audiobooks and those, those really helped me. And like, surprisingly, I was able to be inspired by like non-romance books. Like it just hits you at weird times. Like I remember I worked at like a COVID clinic where we'd have like a COVID drive through. And this was before I was working on my story when I was mostly just working on fanfic, but I'd like get inspired in the middle of like the COVID drive through. And so I'd like whip out my phone and like write down some notes and everything um, this is when I was like, like sitting on the side and like I had, you know, I didn't have my PPE on or anything, mm -hmm. you know, it, this, it was sanitary. I wasn't bringing COVID home on my phone, but yeah, yeah. It's just, it, it always hits at weird moments. And so I'd kind of just like be open to that. Well, and that kind of goes along with what you're saying. Like if you're a busy mom and if you only have like 30 minutes, like maybe, and maybe you do find those little pockets of time in between, like you can write those 30 minutes, but like if you're making dinner and you know, the kids are distracted, hopefully by like a TV show <laughs> or something like that, or right. they're playing in their playroom or anything like that, you can, if you're inspired, you break out your phone and like, you just write it down, jot it down real quick. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's hard because you know, there are two kind of conflicting ideas where, you know, you kind of have to be disciplined and like sit yourself down and write for the 30 minutes, even if you're not motiva motivated. And 90% of the time, you're not going to be motivated. And you have to, that's the hardest part is you have to push through that feeling and just do it anyways. But yeah, and then being open to the inspiration and jotting down the ideas when they do come, even though you're super, super busy. That's kind of what would happen with me is I would be stuck on a scene um, and thinking like, oh, I don't know how to like this dialogue is supposed to go or how to make it mm -hmm. better. And then, you know, it would just hit me at like random times. Oh, always the most inconvenient times, as you probably know, is when it would hit you. So <laughs> you just have to be ready to open and ready to receive it. 
Yeah. And that's great. And then also like writing it down. Like I know friends who will carry like little notebooks with them just because yeah. they've written several books and they say it just happens. And when it does, I got to write it down or it's gone. If I have to, it goes in my phone. And sometimes it goes in a text to my husband and my husband's like, I have no clue what this means. And I'm like, it's not for you. That's for me. You're like, don't worry about it. I know. Yeah. Don't even think about it. It's not nothing for you to worry about. And this is a problem I get into with my writing as well, especially going like having a full-time job and still trying to be a writer is sometimes I will focus on a project. I mean, we're talking about focusing, like maybe on like just writing. I try to focus on a book, but then I get like, there's an idea over here, right. Of like another book. And so oh, yeah. like, I want to go sidetrack. So did yeah. you focus on the one book, the orc boss, or did you kind of have others in different stages of writing or do you just jot them down as a research thing and be, or in a document and say like, okay, that's for the next book or my next mm-hmm. one I want to do. Yeah. My biggest advice is like, don't listen to that voice. Like <laughs> tell that voice to shut up. <laughs> Cause yeah, it's, that's like the biggest pitfall is, you know, we're working on the stories. It's really fun at the beginning. It's really exciting. We quickly fall out of love with it because it's so hard. Um, and that's normal. And a lot of people will jump to different projects and then they don't get anything done. So you just have to tell that other voice to shut up until you get this one done. <laughs> so it was funny because I started this book and I was like, this is just going to be like a one-off book. I'm not going to do like any second books with it. But like halfway through, I was like, oh, no, no, no. These like side characters are pretty fun. Um, There's like a really grumpy elf who works for the orc boss. So he, you know, as I was writing him, I was like, okay, he deserves his own love story. Um, And so that eventually became a motivator for me where I was like, I got to get this freaking book done so I can work on my second book. (laughs) So as long as, you know, you use it, to help motivate you. That's great. But it's, you have to be very careful not to like jump projects. You know, even if you're writing a book and you don't think it's going to go anywhere, that's fine. Just finish it at least. And then you can kind of determine whether or not you want to go forward with it or move to another project. Yeah. And I think that is spot on because I found that when I focus on one book or like one writing project, I can actually like get it done or get that piece (laughs) of it. I want to get done as opposed to like, the five different books I have in any different yeah. state of progress at the moment. <laughs> so, and, and you said, so now it's kind of going to be possibly a series. Now? Yeah. Is yeah. So I'm, I'm work, uh, yeah. I'm working on the second book right now. I think at least maybe like four books. Nice. I, I know. Yeah. It's crazy. I didn't think it was going to be so big. So, and, and these are full length novels, right? Or are they novellas? So yeah, the Orc Boss, it's it's a full-length novel. I'm okay. guessing the second book I'm working on is going to be a full-length, yeah. Knowing Ooh, me, and nice. I'm very wordy. So yeah, they'll probably be full, full books. And I did see, so it is available through Kindle Unlimited, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep, that's correct. Yep. Awesome. Now, are, do you think you're going to stay, like obviously you have the series, possibly now going to go in for Monster Romance, but do you think you'll stay with Monster Romance or you might venture out into other subgenres of romance? Uh, I think at least with romance, I'll probably just stay Monster Romance, maybe write some alien romance books. Um, I don't know. Humans are just boring. I know, right? Once you get into the monster category, it's just like, yeah. there's a lot. There's a lot going on here that I really like. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But I mean, you never, you never know, like, um, never say never. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm very open to whatever I should write or like my inspiration, I guess that I get. But yeah, for right now, I think I'm just going to stick with monsters and aliens. There's a question though, for the second book, have you set any goals for that one? Because I know the first one you said before you're 30 and now you did that. So (laughs) like, and you just, oh, you just celebrated a birthday, didn't you? Way to go, girl. Oh, thank you. Welcome to the, you know, the third club 30. It's amazing. (laughs) It's amazing here. You're going to love it. Trust me. Did you set goals for the second book? No. And I've been like Hmm. struggling because of it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, I had my general like, oh, I'm going to write this amount of words per day. And I haven't really stayed on track with it. I've been like tracking my time, but I think it's, it's hard with the holidays and my husband and I, our schedules like allow for like a lot of like travel. Um, 
so we go back, we live in Arizona, we go back and visit our families in Idaho a lot. And especially during the holidays, you know, I got busy, but then again, it's also just like making excuses for myself, you know, cause I can find 30 minutes anywhere to write. So I, I definitely need to set goals for this, this book to get it done. <laughs> I like that you mentioned that because sometimes our our lives might change to, to a job yeah. due to like holidays, due to the addition of foster children. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> Things like that. Things like that can really like change your whole life or your time or your schedule. And something a friend of mine actually did was she was like, so I, you know, we all heard as writers, I think we've all heard that saying of, if you want to be a real writer, you got to write a thousand words a day. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I think everyone's heard that at some point, Yeah. but one of my friends said, you know what? I've set the bar low (laughs) for myself to at least get like 300 words a day. If I can get that many, I'm good. And a lot of times she over exceeded that because Mm -hmm. she was just like, it was such an easy mark for her to hit. She ended up like getting more, a little bit more. And even on the day she struggled, she's like, all I got to do is get 300 and I'm okay. Like that feels achievable, at least to me. I think we all can be very hard on ourselves. So like, like you said, just setting the bar low, like you can only succeed. Like, cause I think that's what happens with a lot of writers, especially like through the writing process, it can be very discouraging because you see like other people, which, you know, comparison is the thief of joy, but mm-hmm. is what they say. And so they th- comparing yourself to someone else, like, oh my gosh, they got it done in like a year, like less than a year, they were able to get their book fully done, but you, you went into it with a plan and you were able to achieve that, you know, and mm, that my writing process might look a little different. So, but it is achievable. It's just everyone's journey looks a little different and how you structure the methods and the plans are kind of up to you. Yeah. And yeah, you, you could just have to be sit yourself down and be serious and think about like, what are the biggest things that are stopping you from do, doing this? Cause I've met, you know, as I've kind of, you know, connected more with people online, I've met so many people who are say like, who say they have like a work in progress or like they want to be a writer or an author. I think the biggest thing is just like being serious with yourself, knowing your limitations and knowing what you can do. Um, and like you said, not comparing yourself to others. And I do like that you, you understood too enough about yourself because sometimes we have to get real honest with ourselves, which ooh, it hurts. <laughs> it can really <laughs> hurt. Like when you said like you weren't a morning person, right. Mm-hmm. And then you try to use the weekend, you try to utilize the weekends to get some right. writing time done. Right. Like, and that's what I find. I find like after we put the boys to bed, after everything, it's more in the evening that I have the time to write, you mm-hmm. know, or if I get up like ungodly in the morning and I don't I know, know if I can, wants to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, know. Like, I was just like, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> so. No, I know. And it's, it's hard in the evenings too, especially if you're working all day, like your brain is just fried. But I think if you just, you know, kind of make it a habit, it'll get easier. And even just kind of giving you some time after work um, to kind of relax and let your brain reset and then, you know, restart. And I know it's hard when you've got like, you know, kids to have that rest period. But I think even just like taking a break from your computer and then going back to it really helps. Like Mm -hmm. even just like walking away and just like going outside just to breathe for a little bit. Yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Also, you know, going through a crisis helps (laughs) too. That too. I did. (laughs) I don't actually, I don't recommend that one, <laughs> but, but it puts yeah, a but fire under you, right? It kind of, kind of got you going. Whatever gets you motivated. <laughs> I know, whatever yeah. gets you going. <laughs> but it's, you know, I, I think of it as like, you know, we all have stories we want to tell and they're all very important and they deserve to be told. So y- y- whatever gets you there, you need to do it. Absolutely. And I love that. I love that like piece of it is that they deserve, you know, we all have stories and they deserve to be told. Mm-hmm. That's such a great takeaway. So we have talked all about this incredible like monster mafia romance book of yours, which is available now. So mm-hmm. where can listeners find your book and how can they connect with you? So it is, it'll be on Amazon, but also be on Kindle Unlimited. Um, so you'll have access to it there. Um, it's just an ebook ebook form right now, but I do have plans really soon to kind of have it have a physical copy as well so stay tuned for that you know I the best way to connect with me and to learn about like my projects and what's going on is through Instagram my handle is 
at author Lark Crane. I also recommend you checking out my page, not only because it's my author page, you know, learn about what I have going on, but also I have a meme page. I think I'm pretty funny. There, there's some people online who also think I'm funny. So if you're just needing a laugh, I recommend you checking it out. And and you have a newsletter, right? So if you want to keep people want to keep up to date with like um, yeah. anything you're working on for the second book, right? So yeah, I do have a, a newsletter. I also have a website, authorlarkgreen.com. Um, and on there, you can subscribe to my newsletter. I promise I won't spam you with a bunch of emails, but I'll just kind of let you know uh, where you can find my stuff and kind of how my projects are going and when they should be released. 